Hello friends, welcome back to the lecture series on high voltage engineering. In this part, I'm going to discuss the basic principle and one day graph generator. In this generation methods, we are discussing the generation of high DC voltage. We have completed with half wave full wave rectifier, voltage doubler circuit, cascaded voltage doubler circuit, voltage multiplier circuit in previous lectures. And now I'm going to discuss our next topic of high voltage DC generation, that is electrostatic machine. I have divided this particular topic and lecture in two parts. In this part, I'm going to discuss the basic principle and one day graph generator. So when I'm saying a generator, it means when a conductor is placed in a magnetic field, when that converts a mechanical energy into electrical energy. Or in other words, we can say that when a rotating conductor is placed in a magnetic field, the mechanical energy of the rotor get converted into the electrical energy. This is the principle which is generally used in electromagnetic machines in electromagnetic machines where the magnetic energy that is the magnetic field which is present due to the poles and the electrical energy is developed by placing conductors or number of conductors in between that magnetic field so that that rotating conductor experiences the flow of current through it and hence the conversion of mechanical energy to electrical energy takes place in case of electrostatic machines the charged bodies it means it may be charged to some polarity are moved in electric field let us say e against an electrostatic field means the static energy which is present in order that the mechanical energy is converted into the electrical energy so ultimate aim is to develop that electrical energy but we need the high dc voltage with the help of this we can taste the different insulating medium so thus if an insulated belt means the belt is insulated so if i have an insulated belt with a charge density delta means it can charge to the value of say delta or the number of charges which are available on that particular belt having a density of say delta that moves in an electric field which we already said it is E or here we can say it as EX between two electrodes with separation S then the charge on the strip of belt at a distance dx is given by dq is equal to delta v into dx. The charge which is developed dq for a distance of dx is delta into b into dx, where b is the width of width of the belt. Means that width basically decides how many charges are there on that particular belt. So delta is b the density of the charges but that density is available on that belt. So number of charges which are there is represented with delta and B is representing the width. So for a distance of dx, the number of charges which are developed as dq. So dq is equal to delta B into dx. And the force on the belt. Now this particular belt is not static. It is rotating. So the force on that belt is F. Then we can write it down as F is equal to integration. Integration means summation of all the charges. 0 to S E of X into DQ. So EX is the electric field and DQ can be written as delta B into DX. So this gives me the force equation. So if the belt is moves with a velocity V means we now are defining the speed. Then the mechanical power required 
to move the belt is p is equal to force into the velocity the speed through which it is rotating now force is already written in the previous slide that is delta into b multiplied by integration 0 to s ex into dx multiplied by v which is velocity now the current which is in this system that can be written as i is equal to dq by dt that is basic equation now that dq is already written as delta b into dx by dt now dx by dt is what velocity velocity is nothing but the distance upon time right so it is dx upon dt that is velocity and the potential difference that is v is equal to integration 0 to s ex into dx thus in an electrostatic machine the mechanical power required to move the belt at a velocity v which is p is equal to f into v so this is what the mechanical power which is required to rotate that can be converted into the electrical power that is p is equal to voltage multiplied by current assuming that there is no losses in the system so for that we have an a van de graaff generator which is shown here this van de graaff generator is having different elements which are represented those are represented here is the electrostatic machine which generates very high voltage with small output current for the testing purpose the amount of current required is very small but the amount of voltage which is required it should be very very high now what this van de graaff generator consists of this van de graaff generator first of all is placed in an earth enclosure so this point number a is representing earth enclosure as this is earth or connected to earth therefore we can prevent the operator to get in touch with this so that the shock can be prevented there won't be any shock to the operator if this particular part get in touch with the operator or maybe with another any other part of the circuit so this is insulated and therefore we call it as earth enclosure and it is enclosed then we have point number 1 that is called as a lower spray point that is called as lower spray point so this lower spray point basically sprays the high dc source voltage that is high voltage of dc source and this is represented as point number 9 there is a pulley placed which is motor driven that motor may be a dc motor so this is motor driven pulley and on that you will find the belt is placed this spray sprays the positive charges on it and as the pulley rotates in the direction the belt starts rotating so if it is rotating in clockwise rotation the belt moves upward you can see this belt is moving upward so this is the schematic diagram showing the van de graaff generator the generator is enclosed in an earth metallic cylindrical vessel and is operated under pressure or in vacuum so we can say that there is a vacuum present inside this earth enclosure the vacuum is present inside this earth enclosure charge is sprayed onto an insulating moving belt so this is that belt where lower spray point sprays the charges from corona points at a potential of 10 to 100 kilovolt above earth and is removed and collected from the belt connected to the inside of an insulated metal electrode through which the belt moves the belt is driven by an electric motor at a speed of 1000 
to 2000 so this is 1000 to 2000 meter per minute mm meters per minute the potential of the high voltage electrode above the earth at any point v is v is equal to q upon c where q is the charge toward and c is the capacitance of the high voltage electrode to earth the potential of high voltage electrode rises at a rate dv by dt which is equal to 1 upon c dq by dt which is equal to dq by dt is i which is already defined here so therefore we have i by c where i is the net charging current now this Van de Graaff generator apart from this consists of point number three that is called as insulated belt then point number five that is high voltage collector point number four that is high voltage terminal point number seven that is upper spray point upper spray point now this upper spray point basically due to the potential difference sprays that is according to electrostatic charges if one plate carries positive charge through electrostatic effect we get the negative charge on the other plate so on the other side due to this we get the negative charge so now this negative charge moves downward the moment of that negative charge is downward downward in motion so we have point number one lower spray point point number two motor driven pulley point number three insulated belt point number four high voltage terminal point number five collector point number six here you can see point number six is upper pulley insulated from the terminal so this is upper pulley which carries the belt on the other side and it is insulated from the terminal then point number seven is upper spray point which sprays a negative charge on it point number eight is earth enclosure and point number nine is high voltage dc source a steady potential will be attained by the high voltage electrode when the leakage current and a load current are equal to the charging current the shape of high voltage electrode is so made with re-entrant edges as to avoid the high surface field gradients corona and other local discharge the shape of the electrode is nearly spherical the charging of the belt is done by the lower spray point which are sharp needles and connected to a dc source of 10 to 100 kilo volt so the voltage which sprays is of 10 to 100 kilo volt on this lower pulley belt so that the corona is maintained between the moving belt and the needles the charge from the corona points is collected by the collecting needle that is collector point number five from the belt and is transferred on to the high voltage electrode so this transfer those charges on this high voltage electrode which is shown here so this is nothing but the point number four as this belt enters into the high voltage electrode the belt returns with the charge dropped and fresh charge is spread onto it now as the charges which are available on the belt is collected by the collector and therefore the charges get decreased therefore the charges get decreased and now there is need to have another spray point that can spray the another a fresh charge and it passes through the lower corona point generally in order to make the charging more effective and to utilize the return path of the belt for charging purposes a self inducing arrangement or a second corona point system excited by a rectifier inside the high voltage terminal which is employed to obtain a self charging system the upper pulley is connected to the collector needle and is therefore maintained at a potential higher than that of the high voltage 
Daniel Miller. So this is that seventh point called as upper spray point. There's a second row of corona points connected to the inside of the high voltage terminal and directed towards the pulley above its point of entry into the terminal gives a corona discharge to the belt. This neutralizes any charge on the belt. So when it neutralizes, it avails only and only the negative charges on it. So this neutralizes any charge on the belt and leaves an excess of opposite polarity, that is negative polarity, to the terminal to travel down with the belt to the bottom charging point. Thus, for a given belt speed, the rate of charging is doubled. Due to which the rate of charging on this particular side get doubled. So ultimate aim is to have more and more charges on this side, that is on point number one. So the charging current for unit surface area of the belt is given by I is equal to B, that is width of the belt, V with the velocity and delta with the charges, where B is the width or the breadth, V with the velocity, which is in meter per second or meter per meter minutes, and delta is the surface charge density in coulombs per meter square. So this is what the working of the Van de Graaff generator. Now, the insulation which is used here or inside this chamber, it may be a vacuum. And the pressure which is maintained here, if it is not vacuum, then it is 5 to 15 atmosphere. The gas may be nitrogen, air, air freon, mixture, or SF6 is used. So Van de Graaff generator are useful for very high voltage, but low current applications. The output voltage is easily controlled by controlling the corona source voltage and the rate of charging. The voltage can be stabilized to 0.01%. These are extremely flexible and precise machines for voltage control. So that's all with this Van de Graaff generator and basic principle of electrostatic machine. In next lecture, we'll be discussing on another part of it that is electrostatic generator. Thank you.